You ready for the hiss? Ooh. Hey everyone, my name is Nick. Today we're going to find out how much alcohol is in homemade ginger bug. I've been feeding and maintaining this ginger bug for about three weeks or a month now. So it's getting pretty carbonated. I'm not sure how much alcohol is in here uh, and I really want to find out. You can tell it's pretty active because that was a good one. <laughs> it smells really good. Very strong. It smells, um, it definitely smells fermented. And of course you get that really strong uh, ginger smell. Right now the level in the bottle is a little bit low. I've been using it pretty regularly uh, in smoothies and kombucha that I drink. So anyway, to find the alcohol content in this ginger bug, we're gonna be using this alcohol detector here. The way that I wanna use this alcohol detector is I wanna set up my own calibration curve at room temperature. This ginger bug is at room temperature and all of my calibration standards are already at room temperature. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm going to plug in the detector, let it warm up for 15 minutes, and in that time, I'll be able to measure out my calibration standards and have them all ready. I'm gonna plug it in and turn it on. So now I can go ahead and get my calibration samples ready. I can get my laptop out to set up the calibration curve. Okay, so we have all of our calibration samples poured. So we have our 0.1% standard, our 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 1%, and 2%. All right, so I got my laptop now. So as I take these standards, I'm just gonna type them into an Excel sheet I have prepared. Okay, so as you can see, the detector is warmed up now and you have three numbers that you can look at. You have the percentage, the raw reading, and the temperature. Today, we're not going to be looking at the alcohol percentage because we're not using the built-in calibration. We're only going to be using this raw reading here because again, we're building our own calibration curve. And as far as the temperature goes, I know that all these samples are at room temperature. They've sat out long enough to equilibrate. Okay, so while the detector was warming up, I also took some time to prepare a couple of samples. So this is our ginger bug here. And I'm also really curious to see what a fresh ginger soda reads on the alcohol detector because some alcohol detecting units can also detect a compound called ginger all, uh, which is has an alcohol group just like ethanol does. So what this is, I can give it a sip. It's really good. It's just really strong ginger flavor with a little bit of raw sugar. Um, and I diluted it to a level that, you know, tastes like a soda. So it would be diluted to a level that I would actually use it here. I think this will be dilute enough to not read any alcohol percentage, but you know, this is sort of an experiment. We'll be cool to see. Okay, so now I'm going to prepare the calibration curve. Okay, so we're finally done with the calibration. It only took about five, maybe 10 minutes. So now I'm gonna bring you into the computer so that you can see what I'm seeing and see the calibration curve that I have created. Okay, so you can see this blue is all of the data that I put in here. And then this is the calibration curve that it generated. And then this is the equation that's generated from the graph. So some important things to note is this R squared value here. This R squared value here gives an indication of how well your curve fits the data. This is 0.98-ish. Really, you want something like 0.99 or 0.995 or something like that. Um, and you can see that it reads a little bit high on the 0.5% sample, and it reads a little bit low on the 2% sample. So those are some important things to take note of. If you're reading alcohol contents that are closer to 2%, you might want to just take into consideration that your readings might be a tiny bit low, but if you're taking readings anywhere else, you're probably fine. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these constants in this equation and put them into the constants up here in this box. Now that the constants are plugged in, then this calculator down here works. And this calculator, basically all you have to do is type in the alcohol percentage or the raw reading that you get on the alcohol detector and then it gives you the alcohol percentage. You can also notice, remember like I said, in the 2% samples it's reading a little bit low so you can see that negative, you know, those 2% samples were actually reading 1.7-ish 
but all of the other samples are you know pretty accurate you know the 0.5 was reading 0.57 and the 0.25 was reading 0.26 0.1 was re reading 0.09, the 1% was reading 1.05%. So you can see all of it's pretty accurate, and if you're doing your samples in duplicate, you're going to get a pretty accurate reading. In order to increase the accuracy even more, what you can do is change the data selection area. So you can see I've sort of taken out the 2% samples because they were throwing off the graph a little bit. And then if I change these constants, so you can see now that I changed those constants, the detector is much more accurate in these lower alcohol reading ranges and not as accurate at this 2% range anymore. So, you know, play around with the data that you have. Uh, sometimes the data fits better, sometimes it fits worse. It might take a couple times to play around with it. So I think the alcohol readings that I'm going to get are going to be relatively low. So I want the detector to be calibrated for lower percentages. If my alcohol readings start going over about 450, then I might want to do a dilution so that I get back into the range that I know the detector is very accurate. Okay, so let's get started finally with testing the ginger bug samples. Okay, so again, we have this ginger bug that we're gonna test the alcohol percentage of, and we have this ginger soda that we're also gonna test the alcohol percentage of. Just wanna note that both of these samples are homemade, so you know they're not being sold in stores, they're not sold as alcoholic beverages, doesn't matter, just home brewing. Okay, so the first thing that I want to make sure of before I test the sample is to make sure it isn't going to foam into the detector because it can ruin the sensor inside. So I'm just going to wash it as I put it in. Okay, so we're going to let that sit in the detector for a second so that the reading can stabilize. Okay, so I was expecting the alcohol content of this ginger bug to be pretty high. You saw how much it fizzed when I opened it at the beginning. I expected this fermentation to be pretty active, maybe even alcohol content of 5 or 6%. However, you can see from the display that we're getting a reading of about 369, maybe 370. So we're going to type that into our calculator and see what alcohol percentage we get. Okay, so a raw reading of 370 gives us an alcohol content of 63%, which is pretty cool. Okay, so next we're going to test another of our ginger bug samples, you know, just to make sure there wasn't anything funky going on with the first one, make sure our readings weren't wrong, make sure we're being consistent. It's always good to do your samples in duplicate. Triplicate is even better. Yeah, there it is, 372, 373. Okay, so I'm gonna type in 375 into our calculator here, and I get 0.65%. So we got 0.65 on our second attempt, and we got 0.63 on our first attempt. So it's probably safe to say that this ginger bug is above half a percent. Probably wouldn't want to be selling it at this concentration if you're selling commercially. But, you know, if you're brewing at home, no big deal. Okay, next what I want to do is test this ginger soda. I'm really interested in this because I've heard that other alcohol detectors uh, will be interfered by ginger alls. Okay, this is really cool. You can actually see the alcohol, the raw reading is actually going down. So I didn't wait very long between testing the ginger bug sample and this ginger soda sample. So, since there's less alcohol content in this one, it's actually bringing that reading back down. So as you can see, we're at about 107, and we're still going down a little bit. So I'm going to type 107 into the calculator, and I get a reading of only 0.04%. And this is a pretty strong ginger soda, in my opinion. I really like ginger flavor, so I made it pretty strong. The reading's still going down. Let's see what 100 says. Okay, so a raw reading of 100 is 0.03%. This is really cool. This ginger soda is really strong. You can really feel the heat in your throat and go down to your stomach. I would anticipate that this would give at least a alcohol reading of maybe, you know, 0.1, maybe 0.25%, but it's giving no reading at all. So now this one is reading just 92. Let's try that. So still, 92 is about 0.03% which is basically no alcohol at all. So the best practice would have been if I washed the detector by putting a sample of water, you know, just a sample tube with water in it between each sample. But you know, you know, this isn't a commercial process. We're just sort of doing this for fun. Uh, just trying to, you know, find out what alcohol is in these home brewed drinks. Okay, so we're done with the alcohol detector. We can turn it off. 
I'll clean it off screen. I think it's really interesting the things that we learned from this video. You know, this is about 0.6% alcohol content. That's almost nothing. And then this just ginger soda is definitely below 0.1%. Please don't take these readings to be exactly what's in yours. You know, the natural bacteria that might have, or the natural yeast that might have colonized your ginger bug could be completely different than the ones that colonized mine. There are a million different factors that go on, you know, vessel size, vessel geometry, the temperature that things are fermenting, the type of ginger that you use. There's a million different factors that could come into play here. So it's important not to take this data as the same as, you know, whatever drink that you may be brewing. So I want to continue making these videos just out of curiosity. I think it's really interesting finding the alcohol content of various products, various fermented beverages. I just think it's fascinating. Uh, I do have this device for sale, but I don't want to push the sale it. You know, if you're a commercial brewer, then you might want to have one of these. But if you're just a home brewer, this high tech device might not be for you unless you're just really curious like I am. If you have any beverages that you want me to test the alcohol percentage of, fermented or otherwise, go ahead and put them in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys think. If you have any suggestions for this format of this video, if you like seeing the data portion, or if you just want to know the alcohol percentage of these beverages, please let me know in the comments. I'd love the feedback. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. See ya.